daily rap crew where the girl, pretty girl, she had this furry cape on and she said, and yeah, y'all going down to the Philippines and those girls can't speak no English. They don't speak no English. So she gonna like, suck you for that green card and go to someone else. She also gonna be pleasant. She also gonna be wonderful. Okay, she gonna go to somebody else. She, speak English. So she don't like you. See, she just wanna come Listen, here. There's no. I'm not really an advocate for you know passport bros. Like I love black women. I'm a fine. I'm a married black woman. Period. Hundred um, percent. You know whether she in America, or Africa, like you know. What I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Really? From when we talk about the divestment movement. Yeah, because I don't see the divestment to... because mm-hmm. I, I look at them more as a, a hate group than anything. Those are the I think to like go like the biracial. The, the uh, black women that the biracial are looking, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, so I look at that more as a hate. I understand only that. Because I'm sorry. Of the rhetoric that they speak, like you know. I, I feel like understand. I do not disagree with that movement because, yeah, like, listen to what y'all have just been saying this whole entire time about your perspective you know, okay. on like black women and how black women can't be can't be dominant. Black women have to be like. I feel like we never say y'all can't be strong. Independent, none of that stuff. We just said in a relationship, it has you have to have some compromises. But I feel like the black women that are in that movement are so tired of that, and they're like, "All right, well, let me try somewhere else because yes. clearly I'm not appreciated. I like, agree. Who I, I am, who I am, is not appreciated yes. amongst the men that I want to be with. So I can't. So in order for me to but y'all find following the same, no, it's no, like, no, no. It's like on, black women want question. their. Black women want their love story too. Like black women want their fairy tale too. But black women now don't feel like they can get that with black men I agree. because of the rhetoric that black women, I mean black men, have against black women. Yes. Talk black about divestment. Men. It's usually on the extreme. It's like damn, they want to exterminate all black men, mm-hmm. which is crazy to me. So, but the issue I have with that is like we all know white men are the most desired group, uh, ethnic group of men in this country, right? To who? White white men are the most. Let's let's be honest. With every other ethnic group, white men are the most, you know, desired ethnic group, right? Uh, even the data, even the data apps have shown and proved this, right? Oh, so I just don't what happens I is black women it. understand that they have to compete for that white man because if you guys can't even show y'all black men this type of submission and cooperation, the white men that are desired by the Asian women, the Hispanic women, every other ethnic group of women, okay. y'all gotta compete for those white men. And but y'all have no problem competing for those white men. But when it comes to black men, y'all feel like we should just kiss our ass and accept all the bad behavior and everything. I've heard what black women say that they had to tone down their blackness in order to be with a white man. That no, to no, me, I, and that I to me understand is crazy. That. But white men fetishize black women the way that black men fetishize Spanish women. Or and I wasn't even going to be oh, specific, but, sorry. but the yeah. way that the way that <laughs> white men fetishize black women is the that's, way that black men fetishize, fetishize every other group of women other than black women. That's not in bulk. And, we, and, and then, first of all, black women have a problem when black men fetishize because we saying, oh, we only value them for their bodies and this that. So y'all want to be valued for your bodies? No, just no, no. no. So hey, when, when that's not true. Not they don't true. only be the bodies. They like the hair and all that other stuff. They so, think that their kids it, are going to be a, like When black mid, men do it to other ethnic groups, then it's an issue because y'all saying we fetishize and those Hispanic women and this, that, and third. But when white men do it to black women, There's which is rare because not, it's not enough information. Kissing me as a queen. Yeah, it's not enough information Who and data out there though? to show that white men in masks are going and running after black women. There's not enough data. They just got so, a little jungle fever. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of them, not all of them. And I don't like, like that. I think like, it's and weird. Then, y'all got no problem dating Billy that riding a city bike in Williamsburg, but when it's a black man, he got to have a BMW car. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, yo, matter of fact, we had had a podcast where a black woman said that she had um, a higher standard for black men than she did for white men. But black men have this, that's the same. No, but what I'm saying is, if the bar is lower for these other ethnic groups of men, right? The entry of the entry of, of of black women is lower for these ethnic groups of other men. Why is it so high for black men when y'all don't have that same bar for we these white men? We are both the problem. Wait, I literally said right. right. that. You, you think that black men have a higher bar for black women? I literally said that. Yes, 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 y
try to date outside. Oh, not we, but men are trying to. <laughs> like, so, certain, certain black men are trying to date outside the race because they're looking for femininity. That's across the board. The reason that black women are dating outside the race is not because they're looking for masculinity. That's in the black community. And I think y'all looking for other things with wealth and money. Yeah, that, that's that's materialistic <laughs> I think, shit. I think when we're talking about the passport, bros, the thing is, like, if you actually like, if you like. When you pay attention to the passport bros, like they're getting women from like the DR, Colombia, yes. uh, the Philippines, Thailand. Like oh. women can that can speak very little English. Women that don't have and education. Not, women that, that need them. Women, them. women that need women them. Women are raised to be wives. Mm-hmm. They learn everything in, in from, communities. from birth, damn near, from I their father, like from their mother, how to be a wife and how to support your men. Women that need them. That's it. And that's the issue. Women that that's need the them. Issue. It, it's not even women that need them. It's women that treat them with respect. So we don't... N- y'all know y'all don't. So. <laughs> no, look, stop just stop. Know y'all that's don't. not true. You say y'all who you speak is yeah, right. right. Majority I'm of just black women do not have that's respect not true. for black men. Do the majority of... I'm not going to make this video attacking anybody, but I'm not going to be soft on anybody as well. Okay? I will keep it real genuine and not nasty because i do have family and friends co-workers people who know us people know where we live (laughs) Uh, people know my number people know my real email (laughs) so uh, the frito guy that works with me the little guy that delivers the pepsi cola you know with his fine big muscular self so, you know, I, I want to make it like as if I was talking to these guys. I don't want, I'm not going to be, you know, raunchy and nasty and evil about it. But again, um, the girl talking about the Filipinos, I don't feel that it, to me she was really being mean or hateful. Uh, she was just uninformed, like a lot of people are. I will say, on the defense for uh, Filipinos of the that group, I have never, I have never, 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 ever, and y'all can see that I am a mature woman. I've never had any issues with um, Filipino people. I've never had any issues, any problems with the Sikh community. Um, the Filipino people, the few that I have met, well, it's more than a few. It's a lot. Even where I'm working, I'm, I'm I talk to quite a bit. They do speak English. Most of them work in call centers that American companies have contracted to do business with. Whether it's Chase, whether it's the the gas company, whether it's a te- not telemarketing, whether it is a banking institution, um, uh, not banking sales. You're when you're ordering uh, your like a lot of us will be ordering stuff for Christmas online and whatnot and making calls. Those are a lot of the people who are taking our calls. Those people speak very good English, okay? Um, when I had my first ever surgery, I never, ever had surgery. And if you're a person who is afraid of the hospital, you're, yeah, you have every reason to be afraid of the hospital. I'm telling you, I have a lot of family members who work in the hospital. So this doctor, he was the anesthesiologist, and he was Filipino, and he prayed over me before I had my surgery. Who does that? Who prays? Nobody prays in the hospital. Uh, Nobody prays for you. Nobody prays over you. Nobody holds your hand and comforts you. Um, And the surgery went perfect. Uh, Also. When my mom had got sick and we was taking her back and forth to the hospital, the nurses who worked with her, they were all Filipino. I had went in to do something and one of them was just calling, Mama this, Mama that, and uh, another one came in. I was, wait a minute, that's my mama. Don't be, who are you calling mama? Don't be calling my mama mama. Those ladies took good care of my mom. When I worked at the Federal, it was my first government job. Was it my first government? Yeah, I think it was. The girl that showed me around, that showed me the ropes, 
she was a Filipino lady and I am a short person and she was a little bit shorter than me and she was married to this big tall he wasn't really big but he was a tall white guy with blonde hair and I hated when she moved because I forgot she was moving to go with him because he was going to graduate school and she was a paralegal uh at you know at a courthouse at our courthouse and she was so nice and I didn't really stay in contact with her but two of the other ladies kept in contact with her so I don't have any bad thoughts are uh, of these ladies uh i respect as they said respect game when you see game or respect you get love you're loving where you can if you're not being treated by becky sue or ebony sue or laquita sue the way you want she's not respecting you she's not lifting you up she's not bringing joy to your life she's not putting a smile on your face yeah go wherever if that if 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 uh the filipino lady wants you the vietnamese lady wants you the miss dominican republic woman wants you the miss colombia venezuela miss mexico woman wants you fine great awesome but guess what we don't need you i'm gonna do my will smith because i still love me some will smith i still love big willie we don't need you putting our name in your mouth bad mouth and you don't need to run women down western women especially the melanated chocolate woman well i i'd rather deal with a little filipino filipina in a day than to be with big shirley i'd rather do this da -da -da, than do this with da -da -da, da -da -da -da. and i was you guys Pay attention because I'm you know, I'm posting them. I'm looking at these comments from these dudes and also from some of the, the male YouTubers uh, who have Filipino wives or girlfriends or they've m completely moved over there. And uh, I'm looking at the guys that's responding. Oh, man, you right. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, man, uh-huh. Yeah, she, yeah, da, da, da. And I'm looking... <laughs> at their page or whatever they was looking at previously and if you married to a filipina if you've been going to the philippines or vietnam for 10 years 15 years or 20 years i'm trying to figure out why you was just on a black female's page talking about and i'm not talking about him but her page is talking about hair care fitness and exercise or what she ate that day or what she wore that day i mean if if you are a passport bro and your thing is filipino or cambodian or costa rica or dominican republic why in the hell you on melanated woman's hair page checking out her braids her afro or as this other little guy they i guess they finally kicked him off of uh, YouTube they used to call these girls um in the manosphere their hair ropes so instead of saying braids a dread like he was calling these girls being extremely disrespectful oh <laughs> these women hair ropes but yet he's just looking and looking and staring and his mouth is you know just you know watering slobbering checking these these girls out uh so check out some of these pictures you think that you spend about 190 dollars a month at starbucks maybe 190 dollars on your lipstick eye makeup hair care products a month some of us probably spend about 190 dollars getting our nails um and um hair done some people spend more than 190. i know my sister one of my sisters spent about 185 dollars getting her braids getting some braids and then she bought i don't know how much she spent for the the additional stuff to get it put in so between 185 and the, all the other things that was too something why am i saying that because the average monthly salary in the Philippines 
it's a hundred and ninety dollars. Now sometimes maybe it could go as high as six hundred, but you're looking at these people are looking at a hundred and ninety to six hundred and forty dollars a month. I want to say that I do agree with some of the women who I don't believe that they're mad at these women overseas, but I feel that I can understand myself as a woman that some of these women, some of these dudes are taking advantage or trying to take advantage of these women in these um, countries, these third world countries. $190. You got people who give their children um, an allowance about a hundred and ninety dollars a month for them to go to chick-fil-a to to whataburger to um what's that other place these teens like to go to in the mall hot topic and get t-shirts so yeah uh one of my friends was telling me and i shouldn't laugh it's not funny that one of the guys that owns the little uh, club, it's a club, it's two or three guys own this club, uh, that he travels and he comes back and he talks about his little travels overseas and what he did. He don't really go into like detail what he did. But the other night, he was just trying to get this woman, yes, a black woman, a melanated woman, probably with a little afro, trying to get her number. And she said, you know what? This is ridiculous. He just came back from, I don't know wherever it was. Maybe it was the Dominican or Colombia. And she said, now he's back here harassing these women, trying to get their number and getting all drunk. But he was just over there. They, you know, were just over there with these overseas women. So are these guys serious about getting these women and bringing them back to the United States or back to Australia or back to London? Or is it just, you know, it's just a, a thing to do. It's just to have fun, to get jiggy with it and come on back home to your Western woman, your big Shirley or your, your big Anna Nicole, your, uh, that loud mouth, aggressive, confrontational Western woman who do not want to cook, don't want to clean, don't want to save money, don't want to meet you halfway. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so this is, uh, to me, it, it, it's so funny. Um, one of the guys that I was looking at, um, I didn't, and I'm not going to be able to show it because it's from the, what, the TLC, 90 Day Fiance, Violet and Raleigh, or Raleigh and Violet. And one of the, and he's from, I think, what, New York and New Jersey, and Violet's from Vietnam. So when he went over there, and I, I just couldn't stop laughing. We just all was just laughing. She's saying he's big, he's overweight. She was laughing, teasing, teasing him uh speaking Vietnamese to her friends, was trying to get him an outfit. And his little feelings were so hurt. He was telling her, you so rude. You know, that's not right. Just that's disrespectful to make fun of me, to be talking about me in another language. So make a long story short. Now I heard that, I thought they had broke up. Now I heard that she's claiming she's pregnant. She's preggers. And then before that, he had hired an investigator to investigate her because he wanted to know if she was still married. Did she have another man? Was she seeing another American man? What was the deal with her? So now they're saying, no, Violet claims she had a miscarriage. Sad. I don't want to doubt her and think maybe Violet was never pregnant to begin with. Maybe that was a, a little ploy uh to a trap to see if he would have fell for it and and did the paper i don't know what that paperwork is called that they try to bring these women over here to the united states maybe she thought but violet says she had to leave her vietnamese husband the father of her two kids because she wanted to be a independent woman but I thought that's what our passport bros are saying, 
that they're trying to get away from Western women because they want those little submissive, weak, uh, pliable, uh, humble, uh, feminine women, petite little women uh, in overseas versus those big mouth American women. Uh -uh. You guys, hey, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. Passport girls, passport broads, passport chicks. Can a chick be a passport? Um, I really want to say because I'm old fashioned. No, but we do have gazes of passport broads. Could we say that the women from way back in the day, like Amelia Earhart and them, that was traveling? flying these planes, uh, riding motorcycles, driving, wanting to be on the motorcycles, traveling overseas, doing the war and whatnot, singing and all that. They could be probably seen as passport broads. What a, one group that no one ever really says is a passport, and they have passports, models, a lot of the models. Young girls, 15, 16, 17, leaving Germany to come to New York, leaving New York to go to France, leaving Italy to go to France or whatnot. Could they be passport chicks? There's been a rising of women lately in these women travel groups where they're going overseas. There are women like nomads going alone, staying in hostels. I watched that hostel, hostel horror movie. There is no way in hell. Me as a woman, that if I was single, I would travel by myself or with another group of women. We're going to have to have our men or some muscle-bound man, some strapping man with us because it's, there's no way. It, to me, it, it's just too dangerous. Years ago, yes, it was years ago, I took a cruise with some people from church. And it was like 40 of us, okay? But it was like five or six of us stayed in the, in the uh, ship, in the, the room or whatnot. And <laughs> one of the guys, uh, he was from Jamaica. His mother was Indian. I think it was, it was him, his brother, and another family member. And they really looked like Indians. They looked like they were from uh, Bangladesh. They were very dark complected with that straight, thick, uh, loose, wavy hair. So he was telling me about uh, when I told him how many girls was in our room. He said, "Oh, okay." Uh, he said that he that he's seen women, mainly European white women, traveling alone, getting those rooms alone on the ship, and they would invite one of the dudes, whoever they had a little liking to, to meet at night to their room. So that was. You know, and at that time, I had never heard of anything like women traveling alone and getting rooms and then inviting the, um, I don't know what you call the little guys on the ship to, to, to come to their rooms. But yeah, so that way back then, passport bras. So now today, women, I don't think women probably talk about it like men do and I don't think that the women are going there for I'm going to use the word ex tourism they're actually going there for art history learn a, another language learn about the culture they're not really going there to hook up with a Italian a Spaniard a Portuguese um I don't know maybe uh a Nigerian or a Kenyan. They're, they're going there, or Egypt. They're going there, actually. And the reason I say that, because I have one, two, three, about four family members and friends who travel all the time. And mainly when they travel, they're on a church function or a, a ladies' group. And, and I never hear them talking about they met someone, they exchanged numbers with someone. They're just going there for the history and not to get jiggy with it.